And we are ready. Hey, this is Dr. Sutton with MDI Prep. And I am with uh, one of our former MDI Prep alum. Uh, I'm ready to call her Dr. Ofori for sure. Uh, but I'll let her tell you more about that in just a second. But we are excited to have you here to share your journey to help inspire some some medical students who are on their way to try to get into medical school. So thank you for joining us today. Well, thank you for having me. I'm excited to share. Yes, good, good, good. Okay, so the way I typically do this, I, I kind of take you back. And the first question I always ask is, why did you even decide to go into medicine? Yeah, um, so medical school was kind of something that, you know, my parents had kind of drop little hints at, oh, maybe you should do this. Maybe you should do this when I was younger. But I think that I had my own personal reasons to okay. you know my parents are from Ghana. And so learning to navigate the healthcare system um, in this country is very different. And I remember sometimes I would go to the doctor's office with my grandmother and just seeing the way that she was treated and how she really didn't feel like her thoughts were being um, understood or being taken into consideration. I remember thinking I wanted to be able to change that. So um, I was really good at science classes in high school and I got to college and I figured out that through shadowing and things, I was, I felt like this is where I could do the most good and leave a legacy. And so in a nutshell, that's in a way why I wanted to go into medicine. It's definitely like a personal, personal reason. So, okay, so so your parents dropped a few little hints in the beginning, but I guess my question is, what was that aha moment for you? Like, you know, you know, if, yeah, parents, you know, mom and dad can say, hey, this is something you think about, but what solidified it for you? What was that turning point and say, oh yeah, I gotta do this? Um, That's a good question. <laughs> I think I, I had an opportunity to shadow a pediatrician. Um, I think going into college and end of high school, I sh worked with her a lot and she was the first black female physician I'd ever met. And she really took the time to show me, you know, this is what her day in the life is. She really took the time to allow me to learn what she did. And I just love the way that she approached medicine. She was very like thoughtful and intentional about her care. She made sure she listened to the patient thoroughly. And it was kind of like a flashback moment where I was like, dang, I kind of wish you were the one taking care of my grandmother. Oh, you know, man. all those times we were going to the doctor's appointments when I was a kid. And so that was kind of like, you know, I kind of want to be like her sort of thing. And so for me, that's what was the turning point, like, yeah, this is what I'm going to do. And this is how I'm going to get into medicine. Oh, I want to be able to practice the way she does. That is beautiful. Now I'm ready to put on my track shoes and go forward <laughs> to when the first, okay. very, very first time that I met you. Do you remember that? Oh, you were, you were in it? school and I came to speak. I came to speak. Do you remember that? Yes. It was at one of the pre-med society meetings. I remember now. That's right. Yeah. That's right. And so just tell them a little bit, where'd you go to undergrad? Okay. So I went to Texas a and University and College Station. Um, I was there from 2013 to 2017. So was, if anyone else was there, you know, shout out to the Aggies of that time. That was that was a time to be there for sure. I know, I know. And you know, I speak to thousands of people, right? But you know, when I came to AM, I, I I don't I I remembered you so well because I actually think you came up to me afterwards, um, after I'd spoken. And you came right. and you talked. Do you remember what you what you what we what you talked to me about? To be honest, I remember just kind of talking to you about my journey and like i wanted to go into medical school um but i didn't really kind of know the steps to get there um uh -huh. yeah so i had asked you like is there a way that you could maybe point me in the right direction sort of thing and you were also talking about your book and so i made sure that i got a copy of that to uh -huh. read um because i think i i definitely found your story very inspirational 
And so I was like, well, this is somebody who I want to mentor me. Um, so I think that's kind of how our conversation went. It, it did. It did. And I'll tell you what I remember. When you walked up to me, um, you know, and I look at how the year, you know, how many years we've known each other already. But I remember you asked me and you sound you were so intense about uh, knowing how to get into medical school. You you were like literally like wanted me to give you all that information right then. You asked me these questions. And I remember asking you, I said, OK, what's your GPA? And you gave me one of those. Well, you didn't give me the GPA <laughs> right off. <laughs> you gave me one of those. Well, so. Yeah. <laughs> right. So. That let me know, okay, she she's really she's really passionate about it, uh, but we might have a little work, you know. It may not be our traditional route, right? So so let's let's now take them from that initial meeting where you where we talked, into how you got involved with MDI prep. Yeah, so I think that meeting probably happened soon after my first year or beginning of my second year, and so. I was trying to figure out how I would be able to study for the MCAT. And so I had gotten in touch with you during that meeting and we, you were able to kind of lead me to MDI prep as um, an organization. Um, and so I signed up, I remember for one of the summer courses mm -hmm. and um, I met a lot of other people who were kind of in the same shoes as I was. And so that was helpful. I'd never been to like a, uh, a board prep course where other people were there to kind of, you know, bounce off ideas off of each other, or encourage each other to study. Um, it was a really like, I would say very pivotal moment because I knew like I wasn't by myself right. um, going into this. And so that was extremely helpful for me. Yes, yes, yes. And, and I tell you, once you, once you started, I think one of the things we'd like to convey is that it's more than just a prep company, but we're like a family. And we, you yeah. know, we, we want to walk with you the entire way. Cause you remember, I told you, I said, listen, the only way you're going to not, the only way you're not going to get in is if you stop trying. I right. said, I said, as long as you keep going, you're going to get in. Now right. let's talk to them about those hurdles though. Let's, let's let them know <laughs> this, this is, this was not your traditional. I go to the college for four years I'm accepted on my first attempt. I blow the MCAT out the water. Let's tell them how you got to this point of now becoming a doctor. Let's, how did you tell them some of the hurdles you had to overcome? Um, there's a lot. Um, so <laughs> my, my GPA was one of them. It was, you know, over a three, but it was like under a 3.5. And mm -hmm. so for Texas medical schools, like, I'm very proud of the state of Texas. We're very competitive and very great at like just healthcare and medicine in general, but it is, uh, you know, difficult to get in to Texas medical schools. Sometimes on the first try, if you don't have like that high GPA. So I was finding a lot of things, the GPA being one of them. Then I found out that standardized test taking is like not really my forte. And so the issue with that was I took the MCAT, I think the first time um, and I did not do well. Um, and so I ended up having to come back and study again a second time. Okay. And I think it was about two or three more times that I took the MCAT while in undergrad. Um, and honestly, like, if I'm being honest, it was very kind of dejecting going through all of those attempts and not seeming to make like the progress that I wanted. Mm -hmm. But I will say the fourth attempt um, was probably like the most intense studying that I'd put forth for one. And two, um, I had now transitioned. I graduated from undergrad. And that fourth attempt was during my um, my master's of biomedical sciences year, that um, post back year. And okay. so I really, for me, it was kind of like, this is my last chance. Um, I At least that's kind of what I was thinking. Mm -hmm. um, so trying to balance like studying for my classes and studying for the MCAT was a uh, completely, it was, it was a lot. Um, but that last attempt, I did a winter boot camp, I remember. And I basically it was about four weeks of studying 
just hammering out questions, going through them, making sure that I had the right strategies in place with the help of Dr. Sutton. And finally, I was able to take it one last time and it was enough to get me into medical That's school. That's right. Well, let's, let's go back because I'm gonna just, let, let's, cause I wanna really paint the picture because there, there's some students out there that struggle with test taking. There's some out there who sometimes don't feel like they're, you know, they have enough. When you use the word dejected, let's, I want you to, because I, I was there with you. And when you see some people, when they see dejected, they may not really understand what you mean when they say dejected. Let's, let's let them in to exactly how you were feeling. Because I saw, I heard the tears and I, I, I saw the tears at times too. So tell them kind of how you felt. And did you ever think about, you know, did you ever second guess yourself? Oh, 100%. I honestly, there was a period of time when I genuinely thought that, you know, I either must not be this smart or like it, this, maybe this is God telling me it's just not for me because it just was not clicking. I felt like maybe I was stupid or like there were other people who could definitely do this better than I could, which um, I mean, I'll be honest, I think that is still the case. But I also was like, you know, I, I genuinely have prayed for this and I don't see the manifestation of my prayers coming true. And mm -hmm. I kind of want to give up right now. Like there's, for me, it was starting to look like, you know, what's the point, you know, cause this is a financial thing too. Like yes. you're paying money every time you, you know, take an attempt at the MCAT. And so I was like, financially, this is not it for me. And so <laughs> I, I had to do a lot of soul searching and remember like why I was doing this um and through that and the encouragement of my parents and um the support of dr sutton and the other students who are with me i think that that was like the push that i needed to like get my head back on straight to believe in myself again um because it did it did take a toll i definitely felt like you know this might not be for me and they do tell that's the thing they tell you that um some of these admissions counselors um, or not admissions counselors, I guess pre-medical counselors, sometimes they can be not as intentional with their words when it comes to trying to get students to get into medical school. Like if you don't do well the first time, then for them, it's like, oh, well, that's it. And so mm -hmm. a lot of students like myself feel like, well, maybe I should pick a different route. Um, and so I'm so grateful that I didn't listen to them because um, I wouldn't be here. Had well, I, wasn't, I, I wasn't gonna let that happen anyway. Um, oh yeah. <laughs> no, that, that was that was not gonna happen. You know, Elaine and I were praying from you from day for day one. So yeah. so we just you know I saw it. I I saw you in the white coat. I saw you at the graduation. I saw it. So every time you would come to me and we would have those discussions. You know, I would get my towel ready because I know the tears were coming. <laughs> but I would say I wasn't worried about that part. You know, I, you know what I used to think about? I used to kind of imagine this. It's almost like if you think about a hill, like a big hill, it's like you would take off super fast, right? Running up that hill. And it's like as yeah. soon as you get to the top of the hill, it's like, OK, I'm right there. I'm right there. And it's like, ah, oh, I go back down. And then you yeah. get back up there again. And if, in my mind, all I saw was you getting over that hill. And so that's what that's kind of what anytime that we talked, I always wanted to convey to you is that you were good enough and that you were better than you really thought you were. I wanted you to believe that the whole time we talked because I believed it. So, yeah, now let's fast forward again. So now you've gotten into medical school and, you know, by. By all stretch of the imagination, people think, oh, I'm doing so well. Now I'm in medical school. I'm this medical student. But wow, tell them now <laughs> about the whole medical school process. Tell them how did how was it smooth selling? Um, no, not by any means, if I'm being very honest. And that is an illusion I really am hoping to that I'm hoping that changes because. I want people to understand that while medical school is like a great accomplishment getting in, 
you there's work to be done to stay in um and so i didn't i don't think i really understood what that meant until i got in um i struggled a lot the first and second year um taking my you know end of unit exams and things it was difficult trying to find my groove and learning how to study well now i eventually learned how to study well for that but what brought a second set of challenges was my board exams and the thing about board exams is it's another set of standardized exams so mm -hmm. y'all remember the history i just talked about with the mcat that was a whole <laughs> right. whole different story but this this was uh, another beast that i needed help conquering um i took my first board exam three times Mm -hmm. Now, the state of Texas only allows three attempts, so I had to get it by the third attempt. If not, I don't know what's going to happen after that. But <laughs> I, I genuinely struggled trying to figure out, well, how do I study for this exam that's so high stakes? Like a lot of um, residency program directors look at that score to determine whether or not you're, um, you know, a good fit for their program, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. And so for me, I was like, there's so much pressure on this exam and I let the pressure get to me. Mm -hmm. And so I had to learn how to manage my emotions and how to calm down, basically, um, learn how to strategize well. Mm -hmm. um, and then at the end of the day, just trusting that if God brought me here, then there's no reason why he's not going to get me out, you know, get yeah. me through. You know, it. End, you know, Yes. Yeah. And so um, I, every attempt was, a, honestly, <laughs> I, I'll be honest, it was really dejecting. Again, um, it was a really like sucker punch to my gut, like every time. But I think there's nobody that can tell me that I'm not strong after going through all of that and paying for all of those attempts um, and having to sit there and restudy, reevaluate, reassess what I've been doing. It takes a level of emotional maturity and just mental like stamina to mm -hmm. to go through all of that and still make it through. And so right. I do acknowledge that it's not easy, but um, I think with the right support and the right mindset, you, you can make it for sure. And, and you know, something that um, you, you kind of alluded to that I want to make sure that they understand is that when you were going through these tests, you mentioned uh, finding the right resources, reaching out to the right people. Uh, I remember when you called me and you were telling me, um, I don't know why in the world you called me at the last minute, but uh, <laughs> you know, you, you know, you 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 call me, you call me when it's a uh, uh, what they call it a five stage alarm, <laughs> basically. <laughs> oh no! Yes, you did. Yes, you did. Yeah. You're like, Dr. Sutton, I've got to pass the test. You know, I've got to pass it. I've got to pass it. In my mind, I'm thinking, OK, yes, you got to pass it. But, you know, you have other attempts, not knowing you've already taken the test. You didn't tell me about that part. So now I'm like, OK, we got to go into emergency mode now. And you remember we started yeah. doing practice questions together. Yes. We and did. and and you and you know what? Just share a little bit because there may be somebody out there who's saying, "Hey, I really don't know how to take tests." Do you remember any of the strategies that I gave you that kind of helped you with your test? So, the one of the biggest things for me is the v length of the vignettes are kind of discouraging at times, and so because who wants to sit there and read all that, knowing that they have to answer the question and it's being timed? Like it's it's a lot of pressure. So one thing that really helped is definitely reading the stem of the question mm -hmm. and then looking at the answer choices to see like, is are, am I gonna be thinking the right way sort of thing? Mm -hmm. And then kind of go in and try to pick out the hints out of the vignette. Um, that's a more efficient way to look at the questions. Mm -hmm. And then I would say when you're answering the questions and then you finished, you are going through and reviewing the questions, make sure you're assessing whether you missed the question because of a knowledge gap, or you missed the question because you were rushing, mm -hmm. or um, you missed the question maybe because you weren't paying attention sort of thing. Yes, um, right. And so those are the things that really helped me. And then um, 
flashcards. If you are an Anki fan or if you like writing your own paper flashcards like I do, those those things are key. Having some form of repetition is how you're going to remember the patterns because they can only ask the questions so many different ways. And so once you catch on to the patterns, it's a lot easier to think through and sift through like what are they actually asking me and how do I need to answer the question sort of thing. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, I think I've helped at least 450 people have come through. I'm just on the medical end through MBI prep. And, and I, and I have this thing that when I, whenever they finish their residency or get into the residency program, I put their picture up in my office. Right. And I have this kind of like award and the award is called BT, the letter B and the letter T. And you don't know what BT, you will be getting the BT award. And you know what BT stands for? No. Battle tested. Oh, wow. Battle tested. See, the individuals that get our battle tested award are people that didn't maybe have that easiest road. But when they came through, they were literally battle tested. So once you get into residency, you're not going to worry about that because you've been battle tested already. And so that is the, yeah, so, so we're, we're so proud of you. Um, now, thank you. Now, if I had a drum, I would be doing a drum roll because, because everybody wants to know where will you be taking your talents? So tell them now uh. where, <laughs> what you're doing next, where you're going and uh, are you excited? Yes. So I recently found out that I will be training in family medicine at the Oklahoma State University Family Medicine Program in Tulsa, Oklahoma, starting July 1st, by the grace of God. The girl got a job, (laughs) (laughs) y'all. She got a job. Oh, my goodness. (laughs) That is beautiful. That is beautiful. So now, so now it's not all about, you're not going to be just deposit. You can start withdrawing a little bit now. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, I can. Yes. So, so are you excited about this first intern year? Are you excited about that? I, I am. I'm not going to lie. I have, I still feel, haven't fully processed how, mm-hmm. like the fact that I'm graduating in like a month or so, mm-hmm is like one thing and the fact that i have a job is a completely different thing and the fact that i have a job at a great program is like yes i i'm just so grateful because there was you know there were times where i didn't think that you know these programs were gonna pick me or give me a chance at least Mm -hmm. and so i'm excited to prove to them that i can handle um a huge workload that i can be teachable that i can be independent Mm -hmm. um and that I can work, I can think fast on my on my feet and um, that I'm able to help out the team and, you know, be efficient in that way. And so I'm just grateful right now. Um, <laughs> I'm grateful and I am excited. Yeah. I'm yes. It, it is, is in God good. You know, yeah. that, that's yeah. all I can say. And, you know, I can attest to your family and their support. I mean, I love your parents. Um, yeah. They have... You know, I've seen them, you know, every step of the way. So uh, we're excited about the graduation. We are looking forward. I know you couldn't get us a ticket. That's okay, though. You know, even though I'm that I'm that uncle, I'm that, you know, I'm that extended uncle. But I will say I'm still looking. I'm still <laughs> sleuthing around. I'm trying to find them. But yeah, it's yeah. That's it's okay. Right. That's all right. Listen, listen, don't be surprised. Dr. Sun can always find a way in. So <laughs> Don't be surprised. Yeah, sure. we, we sneak in there some kind of way. We might find our way. Okay. But, uh, <laughs> but we, 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 we are so proud of you. I'll say we, MDI Prep, but then I got to say me personally, I'm, I, I'm, I'm proud of you like you were my daughter because oh. that, that's what I have literally seen you grow over the years. And I know now um, the world is going to be a much better place because of the position that you're in. So I'm, I just wanted to let you know that from the heart. Well, thank you. Wow. I, I really do appreciate that. That means a lot for sure. Yeah. 
All right. But let's get off the phone. Let's get off here before we start uh, tearing up and all that. Right. And, uh, so, so, so we uh, we're we're looking forward to seeing your graduation. And for all those medical students or pre med students that are out there, let me just tell you: if you you've heard Nana's story, I'm sorry, Doctor O'Forey's story, you've heard her story, <laughs> you know she's been battle tested, but she still came out swinging. So we want to say the same thing to everybody's watching. Um, just just follow her guide, listen to what she said, and play this over and over again until it resonates in your soul. All right. We will see you later, and thank you for coming, okay? All right. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. All right. See you soon. Bye-bye. All right. Bye.